Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. I'm really excited because in today's video, we're gonna be testing out the Zender Power Station. This is a whole home backup power station. And we have a few means by which we're going to be able to connect this to our home. But first, we're gonna show you some features of the Zender Power Station. And then we're gonna show you how to hook it up to your home, what you need to do in case you're trying to do this to prepare for an emergency. And we're gonna test out how long this system powers my whole home. Basically, we're just gonna act as if nothing changed. We're gonna turn off the main breaker, power this on, and see how long it lasts. So let's get right into it. So starting with the outside, the exterior, it's really a beautiful power station. We got these really cool LED lights on the front that just kind of make it look super cool. But functionality wise, we have these wheels that have really nice rubber that make it a really smooth rolling surface. Uh, to move this around, if you've got it in your garage or in your home or your basement, you can move it around pretty easily. Now, if you notice here on the back, we have this thick gauge cable with these two um, locking bolts that uh, secure this battery to this one. And then these are stackable. So you could attach it to this or you could attach it to the top of the next one. And you can stack these pretty high, I think to 64 kilowatt hours, which is pretty impressive. And then up here on the front, we have a beautiful display. We show our capacity there. We have our input, our output, and how many hours it's estimated to run on any given load. And then over here, we've got our 30 amp. And then uh, this guy here, which is different than what we use here in the US. And then these are obviously the ones that we're gonna be using. And then we have our USB-Cs, our USBs on the side here. And we have this button we can turn on or off the LED light there. And then up here on the satellite battery, we have a USB. This is just for updates, not for charging. We have the cigarette lighter for a solar setup here. And then uh, not too many things on the satellite battery. And then down here on the actual unit itself, we also have another solar input as well as our cigarette lighter and then a communication uh, port there. The Superbase V itself is a 4,600 watt hour uh, power station. And then the satellite battery sitting on top is also an additional 4,600 watt hours. So massive storage capacity here. I want to show you how this can realistically power my home, how long it'll do it, and how easily it is to connect that power to the home. Now, before we roll this over here, I wanna show you the means by which you can get this power to your home. So if you saw my previous video on how to hook a generator up to get backup power, um, we basically used this cable. So this end will plug into the uh, power inlet box of the home, and this side plugs straight into the generator. Now, being as we don't have a 50 amp um, outlet on this particular unit, so what we're gonna be using is this guy. We're going to be adapting this male 50 amp to a female, and then it goes down to a 30 amp, which we can plug right in here to our power station. Now this will allow us to get more amps to the system for certain components that we need to run. Alternatively, what you could use is this guy. I picked this one up for about 15 bucks, and basically this will plug into the power inlet box and will simply plug into a 110. Now you'll be limited to about 15 amps with this one, whereas with this guy, you can push about 30 amps and run more components. So we're gonna hook this system up and test it with that, but I just wanted you to be aware of this uh, adapter that could be used as well. All right, so we've got our power station out here. Now, for those of you that haven't seen this, I took the screws out of this panel, but basically this breaker right here is a 50 amp breaker that's set up for this guy. And so as of right now, no power can be received because of this interlock kit. Now, the purpose of this is that no lineman or anyone can get injured in the event that there's a power outage and you have both your main panel and this on, and this could potentially back feed power up to somewhere else and get someone electrocuted. So this makes sure that when the main is on, this is off and vice versa. So the only way to turn this generator on, or in other words, to accept power into this box is to turn the main power from the city off 
to slide this thing up and then we can slide this on. And I'm gonna show you how to do this in just a second. I have a full video that shows how to do this, how to install it. But for now, we're going to plug in our um, extension cord here. So this end will go right here. Just line up this little notch right here and then twist and then we've locked this in place with threads. Okay, so on the other end, we're just gonna plug this into here. And lastly, we're going to plug this into our power station. All right, so everything is plugged in. We're just going to turn this on here. And before we hit the AC button and give this power, we're going to flip our interlock off. So we're gonna act as if uh, the power just shut down for whatever reason. So in a live power outage, there would be nothing going to here. So we're just gonna flip this off. And now we are able to slide this one up and turn our generator breaker on. And we can't turn this back on until this is off. So right now, in essence, this is allowing power to flow through and into our home. And of course, nothing is going into the home until we flip this guy on right here. So we're gonna hit the AC button. And as you heard that click right there, we are now getting um, power to the home. And as you can see, we're using 950 watts. We're hovering around eight to 900 watts. So as you can see right now, it is 33 degrees out, high of 51 today. It's 9.50 in the morning. We're going to cover this up and just use the house as if we would normally use it. And I'll come back in a few hours and see where we're at. Um, but this is a pretty large power station. So I'd venture to say that this can run our gas furnace and lights and all of the necessities uh, for quite a long time. Now the dryer, um, is another story that pulls a lot of amps. Um, we might be able to use the dryer with this, but we can check it out and see. But again, that's not really a necessity. So we'll come back in a few hours and show you where we're at. I wanna talk real briefly about something that has saved me so much time and energy, and that is Jobber. Jobber is a CRM or a customer relation management system where we can keep track of our customers, our invoices, our estimates, and it has some really cool features that have saved me a lot of time and energy, such as the request feature. So if a customer needs some work done, I simply send them this link, they fill out the request form, they submit it, and I don't have to collect any of their information, it's already in the system. It also collects information about their HVAC system or whatever uh, type of industry you're in, you can set it up specific to that industry. Something else I really like about Jobber is the scheduling aspect. I can put in a job for my employee and he automatically sees it on his end so I don't have to communicate as much with my employee. He just goes in, he can mark it complete so that I can then invoice the customer. So a lot of really awesome features with Jobber. I highly recommend it. If you're in the service industry, check out the link in the video description where you can get 30 days free of Jobber so you can check it out, make sure it's a good fit for your business. Let's get back into the video. All right, so we are still on backup power. It's 12 o'clock. Says we're at 77%. So not looking too hot thus far. However, we are running two fridges, our, our house fridge, the garage fridge, and we're running a freezer in the garage as well. And we're running two furnaces, one for my garage and one for the home. So all in all, it's doing pretty well considering that we're using all that. We're gonna test out the dryer right now and see what that does. Got it loaded up. All the lights turn off. <laughs> I'm sure they'll dim a little bit. That's a no. <laughs> Can't use the dryer. <laughs> so the power just came back on by itself. So I guess if it's overloaded, the power station will kill power and then it will retry um, after, it was probably about a minute and then our power came back on. All right guys, so it's 3.37. Let's see where we're at. 
about 50%. So according to this, we should be able to run probably overnight, being as I won't have the furnace running overnight in there. So that's where we're at, it's 3.37, so we'll check back in a few hours. All right, so it's 8.30, as you can see, it's 38 degrees currently. And let's see what we got here. Wow, we are at 0%. So, our gas furnace is still on, um, but I'm gonna say this is as long as this power station is going to run. Well guys, we were able to get 11 hours of whole home backup power, which when you think about how many things we were running, it's actually pretty impressive. Um, for some reason, I thought maybe it would last a little bit longer, but 11 hours is pretty fantastic as a backup source, again, powering all of those items. Now, something that is super rad about this product is that it has a built-in automatic transfer switch. So how we have this set up right now is we're set up on grid power. So this is keeping these batteries fully charged at 100% capacity. And then we have our gas furnace plugged in right here to that pigtail. So under normal circumstances, the grid power will be going basically through this battery station. And then should the power go off for whatever reason, there's no more power here, it automatically transfers, there is zero interruption. I tested this earlier, and you will just be functioning off of battery. Now in a future video, we're gonna hook up our solar panel to this, and we're just gonna eliminate that, and we're gonna see if this will take care of our gas furnace and maybe another appliance just by itself, by means of solar and this battery setup. So make sure and stay tuned for that video. So another really cool feature is the Zender app. As you can see in this screen share, uh, we see both of these devices here, the base as well as the satellite battery. You can connect to this via Bluetooth or Wi-Fi, and you can check the status of your battery, what the charge is, how many watts are going out. If you have solar connected, you can see if it's actively accepting power via solar. And there's a bunch of other features on the app that make this a really nice tool to have. Now, these things are kind of expensive. If you don't have the funds for a generator or a power station, check out this video right here where we show you how you can power your gas furnace, basically using your car as a generator with a simple $150 inverter. And it's very easy to do, so check it out and I hope you find it informative. Until next time, you guys be safe. Later.